Welcome to the Nightly Rant. I'm Mike. And I'm Toria. This is the show where we talk about the awful things that have happened in our day, the awesome things that have happened in our day, and all the things in between. Thanks for listening, and we truly hope you enjoy. Hey everyone, so for today's episode, we have a special throwback because something happened and we were unable to record an episode and we want you to have an episode five days a week. So we hope you enjoy this special throwback episode that we have chosen for you. Don't piss me off. <laughs> We're having one of those kind of days, are we? Just be quiet. Don't piss me off. What, you want to sit here and talk to yourself? Maybe. I usually do anyway. Oh, really? <laughs> Picture it didn't happen, <laughs> jackass. I have 75 episodes of proof. There you go. The last time we podcasted, you told me I talked too much, so shut the hell up. <laughs> Actually, I never say you talk too much. Yes, you do. Never. You told me I monopolized the whole podcast. That doesn't mean you talk too much. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No. Just get on with it already, you chingus. So, today we're going to talk about people (laughs) who can't make up their mind. Because I am incapable of making up my mind. And my children are incapable of making up their mind. You deal with bullshit a lot from people who can't make up their mind. I do, and it really sucks. Good thing you're good at making up your mind, or we'd be completely screwed. Well, but you know what really sucks? I'm going to tell you the part that really, really sucks, okay? Okay. And and sorry, but you know it's related to other types of things like this. You, you can't come up with your own idea for where to eat, so now I have to come up with ideas for where to eat. And after a while, I run out of ideas, so I start repeating places, and then I think, oh, they like that place, we'll go there again. And then eventually, one of you will complain, oh, we go there way too much. I'm bored of it. I'm tired of it. Well, guess what? Think of something up on your own, then. Do you want to know something hilarious? Always. That's why I no longer pick places to eat, because all I can think of is freaking Supermix, Chili's, and Senior Taco. (laughs) That's all I can think of. And people don't like to eat there all the time, so I keep my <laughs> mouth shut until it's been a long time since we've been to one of the places I suggest, and then I open my mouth and suggest something. <laughs> it's easier when it's just the two of us, because do you, you don't complain. But see the irony of that situation where, like, how am I supposed to feel comfortable making suggestions all of the time when suddenly you're not going to say anything like, oh, no, we went there last time, let's not go there again. Instead, you wait until we've gone there like five times. And I'm bored of this place. Well, like, I try not to do that. I really, really honestly do. I try not to complain if I didn't pick where we ate. So I'm sorry if I'm one of the people who does that to you. It just drives me nuts. But I can totally respect why that would drive you nuts. <laughs> I think, uh... I think that people like that, though, have to realize that if they're not going to make a choice themselves and they're going to let someone else pick for them, then it becomes extra important to give feedback on what was picked. Or just ultimately suck it up and never say anything. Right. One or the other. Right. Feel free to choose for yourself. Oh, wait. But the ideal situation is to give some feedback. Right. 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 I agree. Like, oh, we've gone to Chili's 97 times in the last month. Could we go somewhere else? But see, that would require making a decision. Decisions are hard. People don't like to do that. (sighs) So they don't do it. And then they drive me bananas and they say things about me that isn't fair. So, yeah. People, the worst. Moral of the story. Well, yeah, we, but we've, we've known this for a long time. I mean, it's like... We've come to this conclusion like 73 and a quarter times. 
Yep. 75 episodes there might be two episodes we didn't come to like yeah but it's like it's like (laughs) it's like that idiot you know the pope of all websites idiot you know oh gosh this Um, guy again he he still tweets stuff but he takes it out of context yeah it's even worse now i think like i honestly think what he's doing now is worse than he when he was naming by name yeah because now he's he's making shit up yeah well before he was making shit up too but but i mean like like really getting wild with what he's making up well yeah he takes one sentence out of a text message posts it by itself without any of the context and uses it to bash you what is this like why is it a thing why why like, dude, just stop already. If you're listening to this, Pope of all websites, just knock it off already. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, especially for an old dude like you. You would think, at his age, he would know better. But he doesn't. Well, no. But he and, doesn't. And I mean, it's at this point where, this is what I find funny. He kept saying how he doesn't like pissing contests, but that's exactly what he's trying to engage me in. Yeah, his stick is bigger. Yeah. Let's be real. That's what he's saying. Like, I can't even. The guy's an idiot. But, okay. If you if you want to play it that way, that you're so wonderful and you didn't even notice the impact of being booted off of a server. Then get over it already. Then, yeah, exactly. Then move on. And also, you know, if that was the case, you'd actually be making money again off of that site and you wouldn't have time to be moaning and groaning about somebody else. But since he has all this time to be moaning and groaning about somebody else, we can both assume that he's not making any money off of his site because it looks like a bag of crap that was thrown together in about 30 minutes by somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. I think, I think that, um, how am I trying to put this here? I think that had he been able to, um, just pick up the site and move it to another place and keep operating, Mm -hmm. I think he could claim victory. Well, yeah, because then officially anything he does to that site after that day is his improvements. Yeah. And he would probably actually know what the heck he was doing because it'd be something he was used to instead of something completely new. Yep. I don't even know. The poor decisions have been rampant with the Pope of all websites lately. Yeah, it's crazy. But it's just another example of somebody who doesn't want to make a, doesn't want to have like a real agreement about something. Yeah. And so they make up things as they go along. Well, yeah. Ah. The Pope of all websites is officially one of those people in Costco who just stares up in the air, doesn't know what the heck is going on (laughs) until you like happen to walk in front of them because they're pissing you off because, you know, they're walking around like they don't know what's going on. And then they get all butthurt with you. That's who he is. He's one of those people. Yeah, it's crazy though when people act that way. You bring that that's a good one to bring up. Uh, like that old guy that was driving in front of you when you went to pull into the McDonald's parking lot yesterday? Yesterday, yeah. And yeah. he was getting all mad at you because you tried to go around him, but it took him four hundred years to turn a corner. Yeah. Like I I got at least four new gray hairs while he was trying to turn the corner. Exactly. <laughs> dude was like a road hazard i think he was probably more of a road hazard than i am and i'm a pretty big road hazard yeah it's just interesting that you definitely in our society there's high achievers and really really low achievers and everybody in between but it seems like lately there's becoming this big gap between the high achievers and the low achievers so you're saying there's no middle class achievers? Exactly. Well, what the hell happened to them? Mm. They have no voice. They accept everything at face value. They don't 
question whether or not um, what they're being told is 100% true. So you think we just don't hear from them anymore? That they still exist, they just yes. don't talk. Right, they're just, they've been silenced. Interesting. I mean, they've let themselves be silenced. It's more like it. It's an interesting perspective. Well, one of the things that frustrates me the most is that, let's face it, if this was a TV show that we were involved in right now, uh huh, it would be like, oh, look, Mike entered the race. Wow, isn't that amazing and brave of him to do that against this big, mean bully over here? Uh Uh-huh. And then the homeless situation thing would have come up and everyone would have been voting for me. Right. If it was a TV show. But the real world, everybody talks about how they want to vote her out and she's doing such a terrible job and... She just sits on her ass all the time and she doesn't know how to make decisions and blah, 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 blah. And then polling day comes and they just vote for her. Yeah. Yeah. I don't don't know if that's because people are just, I, I don't know, crazy or if it's because they're afraid of the unknown. But whatever it is, it's alarming. Yeah, it's just. I don't know. It's such a weird, it's a weird situation. Well, because like the point, the point of electing someone is so that you can unelect them in four years when they suck at their job. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. Uh, That's why you're not just given a life term, you know? Right. It's not like you get elected and you have to be murdered to get out of office. Right. You get two terms and you're out. Although that might be true for congressmen. But do you see how, you see how like that creates, um, frustration for me? Well, of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah. think about it. In a district, the size of this district, there's one person running who lied to say that they were living in the district, get the job in the first place. Right. And then there's two people who relatively have not that much money and are just interested in improving the community. Right. So one of those one two from people a should more win. moderate one from a more moderate kind of will please end up pleasing both sides, but will also end up upsetting both sides in certain situations, versus another guy who will only please like a percentage of one side. And piss off everybody else. Right. You know, it People should be remembering that they said they weren't going to vote for that person. And they shouldn't even be thinking about voting for that person. Their choice should be between the two of us. Not the third party. I agree. Because the entire county can seem to agree that she's done a piss poor job. So in that respect, if she's done such an awful job, don't vote for her. It's a nonpartisan election. You don't vote along party lines for this big bad, big bad election. Exactly. So if she's so bad, get rid of her. Get rid of her. I mean, and, and if that's you what don't get saying. rid of her, don't complain about her for the next four years, because I will throw it in your face. The first time you elect somebody, you didn't know what they were going to be like, but the second time, you should have known better. Yep. Yep. I think that I think that's where that saying comes from, right? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Well, exactly. Uh, it's like it's like there'll be a Canadian election coming up in this year, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They don't campaign for as long as the United States, so you don't really know about an election until right. a lot closer to when it happens. Right. But but if the country of Canada as a whole re-elects Justin Trudeau, I'll just shake my head at them. because Not because I have any agreement or disagreement with how he's existed for the last few years, but the whole country has just done nothing but complain about how he just 
He's there for the publicity. He just likes to have his picture taken. All that good stuff. Yeah. Like, so don't elect him again. Just don't do it. <laughs> well, but that's exactly it, though. Then they'll continue to. I mean, you know, it's funny, like, the former school board president in Cyprus, who, as you could see, doesn't really like me very much. She was presiding over closing down of two schools and they had meetings at a whole bunch of schools and they went through twice. Right. And honestly, the school board did a really, really, really good job of being sensitive to people's wishes and needs. Okay. Um, they, they were, they made sure that they went through twice because, you know, they know it's the typical thing. You you send a message home. Somebody doesn't read it because they just don't read that stuff. And um, then they hear about this meeting that happened and they get all irate that they didn't get to go. So now they're paying attention more. So now you send a, set up a second meeting where you talk about the same thing. Right. You know, and they wouldn't have been required to do that. Like that was going above and beyond. And when they finally announced when they were having the meeting, the day that they were having the meeting to announce what their decision was, they used the Cypress Community Center where we've gone for like concerts and Mitchell's sixth grade promotion. Right. And they used that for the meeting because they knew how many people were going to be there. And people were talking about how silly things like if they were to give up their sal or their expensive salaries, then they could o- keep at least one of the schools open. Well, they get paid like $225 a month stipend. And most of that goes to dinners and things that they have to go to because they're put onto committees to represent the school board so it only costs what like a thousand dollars a month to keep a school open in these people's mind well but that's the point (laughs) the bigger point isn't that the bigger point is that they don't know what these people make you know what's interesting when i was in my quest for city council meeting agendas the other night Mm -hmm. i don't remember what city it is but right on there hello we are the city council of xyz city it says how much their monthly stipend is. So it's like in your face public knowledge in that city. It wasn't, well, it wasn't Cyprus, but it was well, one of the cities. Well, here's the thing. California has what they call transparent California, and they require that like salaries of public employees are public knowledge. You can look them up on the internet. Right. I've just never seen one that was like right on the... Sure. But, but you didn't let me finish what I was saying. So that woman... Everyone was like, we're going to vote her out. We're going to vote her out. You know what? We're getting rid of her. We're voting her out. She got the most votes in the next election. Oh, geez. The most. But then what cooked her goose was when she came up for re-election, she got kind of, you know, George posted something in the event news about the property being how property was used by the district okay and she let him push her buttons and she went off on him in a in a letter to the editor responding back oh geez and they used that to defeat her and she got defeated and didn't get reelected. that's an all-around poor life decision yeah Ah. right like that's crazy but that's that's what should have happened right I, no i don't you know, i don't disagree people with you. did not think that if people didn't like what she did and i'm not saying whether i cared or don't care i'm just saying that if people didn't like what she did then it was incumbent upon those people to not vote for her i mean it comes down to me it even comes down to here's what i would do if 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 i was in lisa bartlett's district yeah. And I didn't like the job that she was doing. Well, she's running against herself. Right. I just wouldn't vote for anybody. It makes sense. And I would encourage everybody to then not vote for anybody. What, because the then only- there'd be like, well, 12 people came out and they voted for Lisa. Four million people voted on other things, didn't cast a vote in this election. It would, that would, that's like the only case scenario where not voting will actually mean something. Well, yeah, because you vote on all this other stuff, governor, state senator, 
who your representative is going to be, et cetera. You vote for all that and you just don't vote for that one. Exactly. And if there's 70,000 voter turn, for voters turn out in her district and only 5,000 vote for her, then maybe she should rethink how she's doing things. Exactly. And it's like a kind of a silent protest. But I mean, that's the thing. People don't think in that manner. And they don't step up to the plate and run for office. I can't believe she's running unopposed, especially with all the complaints there are in the South County cities. Yeah, I don't know. But, but all right. So anyway, that's what's going on, Charlie Brown. Stuff and things, indecision yep. and... Things and stuff. Things and stuff and stuff and things. Mm-hmm. Plugging away at our, at our fun times. Yep, that's a thing. <sighs> All right, well, I got nothing else. Add? Nothing <laughs> nope. Do you? Well then, good night, everyone. Hasta la bye bye. Hi, everyone. This is Mike, and I truly hope you enjoyed this show. You're able to subscribe to this show on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher, so as to never miss an episode. If, by chance, you did miss an episode here or there, you can catch up on all shows, past and present, by heading over to yogispodcastnetwork.com forward slash TNR show. Thanks for listening.